Now it is time for member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member from Kiwetno. Miigwech, uh, Speaker. Uh, 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 along with Cree and Inuktitut, Mi'kmaq and Dene are a handful of indigenous uh, languages that are not currently endangered. Right now, they are listed as uh, vulnerable according to the United Nations uh, language assessment criteria. According to Anishinaabe language uh, keeper Shirley Williams, we need to be doing more for indigenous language uh, education. In her words, she says, uh, the residential school system almost destroyed the Anishinaabe language, the Anishinaabe way of learning, ways of learning. If we are going to move past the harms of the residential school system and, to, and towards reconciliation, indigenous languages need to be supported and we need to write and speak in the language as much as we can. We need to respect and accept each other's dialect and encourage each other to learn and speak the language. We need to love our Anishinaabe language, no matter how it's said, because we belong we all belong because the Creator gave us all our languages. So, uh, uh, miigwech. I recognize the member from Ottawa, West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. During the last session of Parliament, I rose to speak about efforts to raise money for Ottawa's police service dog program. I am pleased to rise today to provide an update on the progress of some of the new puppy recruits that were sponsored in memory of Detective Constable Bruno Gandron. Labrador Retriever siblings named Blue and Liberty have recently turned six months old. They are both making great strides in their training as they get more comfortable in public situations and learn to stay calm while meeting new friends. The training is facilitated by National Service Dogs in Cambridge, Ontario, who have previously donated a facility dog named K9 West to the Ottawa Police Service. The memorial fundraiser covered the cost of training these puppies who could one day go on to help children with autism, veterans or first responders with PTSD, or help at police stations or courthouses like Canine West. One of the program's mottos is that each dog has their own unique path to greatness. Best of luck to Blue and Liberty as they continue down that path. Member statement. I recognize the member from Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Gun violence in the Regent Park community is reaching epidemic proportions. A few weeks ago, I joined uh, my community for a march to end gun violence. Uh, it was organized by several groups, including uh, Mothers for Peace, which is a local community group that helps mothers who have lost children to gun violence. Local leader, leaders like Saria Ibrahim, uh, who is one of the co-founders of Mothers of Peace, are telling us that enough is enough. They want to know how many people will die before these shootings stop. Far too many people in our community have been taken too soon or been touched by gun violence in their lives. Many of them are young people who deserve to feel safe as they grow up in their community. Most recently, we've lost uh, Thane Murray, um, who was a beloved youth worker in Regent Park, uh, and his loss has just had a tremendous impact, um, particularly on the young people in the neighbourhood. People are reeling and they're asking why, after years of promises from government after government to respond to this crisis, why these reckless killings are still happening. People are rightly concerned about the impact that hearing gunshots uh, right outside their homes and losing friends and losing mentors, about the impact that that's having on children in our community. No child should have to live through that trauma. All levels of government must step up and tackle the root cause of gun violence today. We need substantial investments in poverty reduction. We need to see more resources and opportunities for youth, mental health supports and anti-poverty measures like improvements to affordable housing and education. It's time for governments to listen and our communities to take real action to end gun violence. Thank you. Thank you. Member statement. I recognize the member from Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just this week, I spoke about the government's dedication to upgrading the infrastructure of our province, a commitment which we have upheld even during the COVID-19 pandemic. Together with the Minister of Infrastructure, I recently had the pleasure to announce 
more than $45 million in provincial funding to support the reconstruction of South Common Community Centre and Library in my riding, Mississauga Erin Mills. When I was elected to represent our community, Ms. Madam Speaker, I made a promise to every single constituent it, it was to listen to their concerns and advocate for the progress of Mississauga Erin Mills. And I believe announcements like this are the perfect example of the promise being kept. The South Common Community Centre had been essential to the lives of many in our community, from our youth to our seniors and all in between, and has been a, a cor cornerstone of Mississauga and Mills. This fund will be used to build a new community centre that will have indoor and outdoor fitness spaces, an aquatic centre and a new gymnasium. This historic investment will help improve the well-being of the constituents that I represent for decades to come. By investing in local projects here in Mississauga and across the province, our government is helping to strengthen and protect communities, create jobs, and to contribute to our province's economic recovery and growth. As the COVID-19 pandemic has clearly highlighted, investment in health and wealth of Ontario are more critical than ever, and our brilliant vaccination program is helping to protect the Ontarian from COVID-19. We are working to secure a bright future for our youth in our province. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member from Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Madam Speaker, Monday's throne speech offered absolutely nothing new to help Ontarians. And for families of children with autism, the message was loud and clear. This government, the Ford government's underfunding and lack of support for children with autism will continue. This government promised to eliminate the autism program waitlist. Shamefully, it has ballooned to 49,000 kids under their watch. Families are left in despair. We all saw on national news Stacey Kennedy, who was forced to camp out in front of Premier Ford's constituency office to try and get answers for her son, Sam. In my riding of Dundas, the Ned Oborskis and their little daughter, Zoe, are facing a devastating wait for services. Instead of help from this government, they are left on their own. As Zoe's mom, Mary, says, you're using your visa card instead of your health card. And Hamilton mother, Nancy, who fought for her twins to access therapy after going into debt to pay for speech therapy. She says, I've watched countless families in our community be forced to end therapy prematurely with no plan and no hope. We live in constant fear. It is way past time for the government to fix this atrocious mess. So on behalf of all these kids and their families, I implore Minister Smith and Premier Ford to stop leaving tens of thousands of kids behind, stop leaving them languishing on wait lists, and provide the support that they desperately need now. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member from Guelph. Good morning, Speaker, and thank you. Yesterday, I tabled a motion to declare a housing affordability and climate emergency. These two connected and critically important issues, the government actually failed to even mention them in the throne speech. We must immediately recognize these issues for what they are, emergencies that require urgent action. Speaker, I invite the government to work across party lines to implement policies that create a massive expansion of affordable housing, 15-minute neighborhoods, a freeze of urban boundaries to reduce sprawl, and permanently protect prime farmland and wetlands, the lands that feed us and protect us from flooding. I once again call on the government to cancel Highway 413. Instead of building highways that supercharge sprawl and pollution, we need to build livable communities where we can walk, bike, and take a transit ride to work, shop, and learn. And we need to eliminate homelessness by funding the permanent supportive housing projects proposed for Guelph and in communities across Ontario. Speaker, it is clear we can grow our economy and improve people's lives if we have the political will to take on the housing affordability crisis and the climate emergency. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Flamborough Glanbrook. Thank you and good morning, Mr. Speaker. I want to express how proud I am of our government for taking urgent action to provide coverage for a life-saving drug for cystic fibrosis patients. 
Trikafta is the latest and most effective treatment for CF, and because of our health minister's rapid response, it's now covered under our publicly funded drug program. Within days of clearing all the federal regulatory hurdles, our health minister initiated funding. CF patients and their families have fought tirelessly for access to Trifacta. Trikafta. One of those advocates is Tammy Strong, who I introduced in the legislature prior to the pandemic. Tammy and her husband have two daughters, Michaela and Madison, who both struggle with cystic fibrosis. Tammy sent me an email shortly after the funding announcement to say that her family is celebrating this decision. She thanked our health minister for moving at lightning speed to fund a drug that will improve the lives of Michaela and Madison and the 1,500 other individuals in Ontario who live with CF every day. Tammy says this drug will literally change her daughter's lives. It will give them a future. But it comes with a hefty price tag, $300,000 per year per patient. When her daughters first heard that the drug was approved, they were reduced to tears. Because of the immediate action taken by our health minister, CF patients now have access to a drug that will ensure they will live longer and healthier lives and have a brighter future. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Davenport. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. And I want to talk about class sizes. I want to urge this government to once and for all step up for our kids and our classrooms. At 26 weeks, Ontario's schools were closed longer than any other jurisdiction last year. And that's because this government took a piecemeal plan that put savings and saving money ahead of the safety and well being of our kids. As bad as it was, we and all the families out there had hopes that the government would learn from last year's lessons and apply them today, but turns out that was wishful thinking. Every single day, I hear from families across this great province whose children are in classes that are larger than they were pre-pandemic, leaving absolutely no room to safely distance and less time for one-on-one -on -one support. And in the Toronto Catholic District School Board, uh, speaker, students have been forced to combine into supersized classes to meet ministry funding restrictions, resulting in teacher layoffs and parent protests in the streets. A motion is going to the board tonight. It's going to call for immediate funding assistance from the ministry to help reduce those class sizes in hotspot areas. So today, on behalf of students, of parents, of education workers across this province, I am calling on the Premier and the Minister of Education to stop cutting funding for our schools, lower class sizes, and invest in keeping our kids safe. Member Statements. The member for Oakville North, Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to mark the 61st anniversary of the independence of the Republic of Cyprus on October 1. Since becoming independent, the people of Cyprus have worked hard to build their country's economy and have seen their democracy flourish. Cyprus is a member of the European Union, working together with other European countries, building peace and prosperity across the continent. Yet Cyprus remains painfully divided, with the northern part of the island organized as a separate state recognized only by Turkey. I had the opportunity to visit Cyprus before the pandemic, and I saw the division of the country, but also how people in an independent Cyprus have built a thriving nation as they hope to one day see their island reunited. We honour the Canadian peacekeepers who sacrificed to maintain the peace in Cyprus and the 29 who lost their lives. Cyprus is a fellow member of the Commonwealth of Nations and has established its High Commission to Canada under His Excellency Dr. Vasilis Filippou. Cypriot Canadians have made and continue to make a tremendous contribution to our country and province, to our culture and our prosperity. The Cypriot Federation of Canada is a leader in the community. We extend our province's gratitude to all who share this great heritage and whose accomplishments, struggles and sacrifices continue to solidify Ontario's position as a province renowned for our commitment to tolerance, diversity and multiculturalism. To all the people of Cyprus and to those of Cypriot descent here in Canada, may we join together in honouring this anniversary for a Cyprus that will always remain free and independent. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. 
For a long time, Scarborough has been ignored and left behind. Due to the hard work and the commitment of the government's Scarborough caucus members, this has been changed. Scarborough is finally getting the attention and the care it deserves. Our government is laser focused on improving the quality of life for our residents. On July 28, I joined my Scarborough colleagues at the Birchmont Hospital in Scarborough Aging Court to announce the investment of $26,832,000 to SHN under the Ontario Financial Stability and Relief Fund. This is in addition to the $4,718,000 under the Health Infrastructure Renewal Fund. These fundings will help SHN to provide high-quality care to the residents. The health and safety of the Scarborough Aging Court is my top priority. Our government will leave no stone unturned to provide first care, health care to residents of Ontario. The renovation of the current 11,000 square feet emergency department at the Birchmont Hospital and expanding it by 14,000 square feet is another substantial commitment to enhance the Scarborough Asian Court residents' health. The building of the Bridal Town Community and Health Hub after 12 years of delay is one more evidence that I am committed to help turn the tide and address the need of Scarborough Aging Court. I am proud to have participated in the July 28th funding announcement to help SHN recover from the financial demands COVID-19 imposed. Finally, Mr. Speaker, the best is yet to come for the resident of Scarborough Aging Court and the Scarborough. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. The Leader of the Opposition has a point of order. Thank you uh, very much, Speaker. Uh, this morning I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence for the 959 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since we last paid, tri paid tribute to victims of the pandemic on June 3, 2021. Leader of the Opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment's silence for the 959 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since we last paid tribute to victims of the pandemic on June 3rd, 2021. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you very much. Members will please take their seats. Okay.